Mercedes Citan is Stuttgart's new entry in the small van category and the first product of Mercedes' partnership with Renault. In fact, the Citan is based on the Renault Kangoo. In this market segment, fuel efficiency is very important. We tested the 109 CDI Blue efficiency model. The 1.5 liter diesel is good for 66 kilowatts and consumes 4.3 liters per 100 kilometers. Mercedes has a long tradition of making small delivery vans. In the 1950s, the 170 model was a familiar sight on European roads. The Citan had its debut in Denmark. It's available in three trim levels and three different lengths. The shortest version is just under four meters long. The exterior projects durability and high quality. These are qualities that apply under the sheet metal as well. Stefan Lucas from Mercedes says the first thing people will notice is the design, which he finds both attractive and aggressive, and it fits into Mercedes' utility range along with the Vito, the Viano, and the Sprinter. He also says the car is economical. Beyond its overall fuel consumption of 4.3 liters, its overall running costs make it attractive. And the third thing is safety, another Mercedes hallmark. The Citan has electronic stability control, which the Renault Kangoo lacks. Enough theory. Let's take it out on the road. Simon Grossard Linnemann is a baker and knows what he wants from a small van. The Citan offers flexibility. It's available as a box van or with a windowed cargo area and the rear can also be used as a seating area. There are up to six airbags available. The suspension and stabilizers were developed for the Citan. Electric power steering is speed sensitive and makes the car highly maneuverable. It's a bit like driving a small car. You don't feel that it's that big. You can see all the dials as well. There's no problem there. Even with the reflection from the sun right now, I can see everything. It seems like quite a nice stereo as well. It comes with a USB. I hope that's standard, because I would like that. But let's try it out. And it's got Bluetooth as well, so you can speak on or talk to your friends on the phone without it being illegal. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at its storage compartment. It can handle up to 3.8 cubic meters of cargo. In a company like uh, where I work at Lauke Hussel, it's like uh, you don't need more, it's you know, more space than this, and there's still loads of space left. So uh, compared to the price and the value for the car, it's huge. When you drive the car, it feels like driving a small car. You can, you know, the turning distance around, circle turning distance is very small, so you can get around small corners and things like that. So it feels like a small car with loads of space. We also gave Kamiyar Taheriyan a chance to take the Sitan out for a spin. He's a cook in a restaurant. The van's cargo capacity is important to him. He's also got plenty of stuff to transport. Kamiyar says the new Mercedes is a pleasure to drive. Really easy car to handle. Uh, the gear shift is uh, very smooth. Uh, the brakes are, are very good. When you accelerate, it's very smooth. It's not like bumpy, and um, it's definitely good if you have a restaurant. Because sometimes you have to buy uh, more stuff, and it's they are bigger, so it's easier. You just go once, or instead of like going five times for a smaller car. So it's definitely a very good storage room, so you can fill it up with all the things you need one time. Go one time out and come one time back again. Stefan Lucas from Mercedes says the company is aiming the Citan at an extremely broad target group. The name Citan is a combination of city and titan, so obviously this is meant as an urban vehicle. It's nimble, it's compact and versatile, and it's quick. Mercedes sees it as the ideal tool. In Germany, the Citan starts at 17,445 euros. That's 810 euros more than its Renault Kangoo equivalent.
The new generation Range Rover is celebrating its world premiere. It's the first SUV with an all aluminum body and chassis. That means it's 20% or up to 420 kilos lighter than its forerunner. The new Range Rover will be available from German suppliers at the beginning of 2013 at a starting price of 89,100 euros. SEAT presents its fourth generation Toledo in the Spanish city of the same name. The car's headlights, its trapezoid grille, the lower air intake, and the horizontal rear lights give the car a broad shouldered look. The Toledo has a 77 kilowatt motor and takes just over 11 seconds to reach 100 kilometers per hour. It will also go on sale in Germany in 2013. SUVs are a common sight on the roads today. German car maker Opel also has one in its lineup, the Antara, introduced back in 2007. Now we're going to put the new 2012 model through its paces. On the outside, the updated Antara looks much like its predecessor. Under the hood, Opel has replaced the old model's 2-liter turbo diesel with 2.2-liter engines, good for 120 or 135 kilowatts. Trunk space ranges between 420 and 1,420 liters, but we're going to need more room to transport a horse. Before we can load up the horse trailer, we first need to attach the trailer hitch. That goes pretty quickly. Simply insert the hitch into the appropriate opening and secure it. But it's important to make sure you've got the right driver's license. In Germany, that requires taking an extra exam. Anne Christine Wendler explains that applicants must take five hours of driving lessons, but no longer do any theoretical training. During these five hours, she says, you just drive around, and that the only hard part is making a left turn, going backwards. They ask you to do that in the exam. Das wird dann auch in der Prüfung gefragt. Before Anne Christine can load her horse, she still has to hitch up the trailer and plug in the electrical cord for the tail lights. With just a few simple actions, it's easy to get the trailer into position, provided it's still empty. Now everything's ready for the arrival of Anne Christine's horse, Cookie. As the Antara has a towing capacity of between 1,500 and 2,000 kilos, the car has little problem pulling the loaded horse trailer but drivers should make sure not to exceed the maximum permitted weight of 2,505 kilograms. In addition to the new engine, Opel has also optimized the Antares chassis. The front axle now boasts McPherson struts with increased spring rates, and the rear suspension's trailing arms are now hydraulically damped to cushion bumps and shocks. Even with a trailer attached, the Opel Antara still looks smart, but the car's stiff clutch is creating headaches for Anne Christine Wedler. It's really tough to depress the clutch, Anne Christine says. This might not be such a problem for regular drivers in ordinary city traffic, but when pulling a horse and trailer, she finds it strenuous. You must release the clutch carefully to avoid jerking the trailer behind. We tested the Antara with the 2.2 liter 120 kilowatt diesel engine. It's quite fuel efficient, consuming just 6.3 liters per 100 kilometers driven. But with CO2 emissions of 160 grams per kilometer, it's not the most environmentally friendly of cars. 
Germans who decide to buy an Antara will need to shell out a little over 27,000 euros for the basic selection trim version. That makes the Antara almost 2,000 euros pricier than the cheapest VW Tiguan. The Antara comes in three different equipment packages. A CD radio, air conditioning, and ESP Plus with cornering brake control also come as standard. The Caravan Salon in Dusseldorf is Germany's fair for motorhomes and caravans. And even if the summer in Europe is slowly drawing to a close, this event will whet your appetite for the next vacation. Camping, almost like in the old days, these compact camper vans are still popular favorites. This is a model with a large tailgate and enough space and mod cons for two campers with a taste for comfort. A rear tent and an awning make it even roomier. This tent trailer for 12,000 euros doesn't weigh much and takes up little space. It folds out automatically at the push of a button. Egbert Holtkamper from Holtkamper says his tent trailers appeal to families with small children because you can arrive and immediately see to the children without having to spend half an hour on pulling it up. But it's also attractive for older people or people with mobility problems. But for a number of years now, the trend has been developing away from caravans and tent trailers and towards camper vans. Vehicles that are also suited to inner city driving are particularly popular. They are both economical and comfortable. According to Hans Karl Sternberg, the mid-range market is currently a bit tough, but entry level is booming. Registrations of compact motorhomes have risen by double digits in some cases. He says there is also a lot of interest in the luxury segment of the market, often from people who are upgrading from less expensive models and want to splash out on something special. Big motorhomes like this one can easily cost over 100,000 euros. Everything has been catered for. There's even a small car on board. But you ain't seen nothing yet. Faulkner produces this stuff of dreams for one and a half million euros. Its coach chassis hides a Ferrari inside, just waiting to be taken for a spin. The Faulkner performance is full of the very latest high-spec mod cons. Stephanie Faulkner from Faulkner Mobile says that they manufacture everything except their motor, axles and gearbox and that everything is hand assembled. So they can easily cater for special requests. It's not a problem if someone wants a bigger kitchen or a bigger couch. Other manufacturers also specialize in making customized luxury vehicles, like this one. A vehicle like this will set you back at least 700,000 euros. Michel Ketra from Ketra Luxury Trucks explains that it takes at least four months to build one. Producing 60 vehicles of this complexity in a year is a logical feat, he says. But camping isn't just a popular European pastime. In the U.S., this style of travel has its fans, too. Airstream travel trailers go back 80 years, and they're real lookers. Airstreams are quite a rarity in Germany and can cost upwards of 50,000 euros. Their interiors are well-equipped and comfortable, but it's what's on the outside that makes them so special. The hand-riveted aluminum skins explain their price. This Swede caravan comes from Lithuania and is made completely from wood. Inside, there's just enough space for two. The kitchen can only be used from the outside. At 5,500 euros, it's one of the products on show that caters to the smaller purse. Today, German-American entertainer Ron Williams has a rendezvous with a classic American car. He says he can't believe his eyes. 
1952 Cadillac here on Lake Amar in Bavaria. And it's in great condition, too. Look at this, he says. Talk about chrome. There's no comparison with the cars of today. It's real chrome, heavy and thick. You could deep six your opponent if he dared to challenge you at traffic. He'd be gone. You wouldn't even need any torpedoes. It's crazy, Ron says. This was a car for presidents, for superstars and rich people. Naturally, this beauty naturally has a proud owner. Ron wants Chris Ebner to tell him everything about his Fleetwood. Chris, First, Ron asked Chris how he found the lovely green lady. Chris says it's a good story. He dreamed about this car for 20 years before buying it from an old former American soldier. A GI, Ron asks. He was in California, Chris says. Ron's home state. Chris explains that the GI moved to Florida and left the car with his children in Idaho, but they didn't want the caddy and put it up for sale on eBay. Chris saw it and clicked the Buy It Now button. So that's how the 1952 Fleetwood came to Germany. From 1946, Cadillac marketed its most luxurious models under the Fleetwood name. Ron asks if the car looked like it does now. Chris says it looked off. It had a terrible paint job. He says the car had been painted three times with thermoplastic paint topped with acrylic. So last year he stripped it down to the bare metal. Ron asks if they can get in. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, hammer. Chris agrees the dashboard's fabulous. Ron says it's like sitting on a living room sofa. There's nothing better. Oh, and the horn. Ron says that sound tells you it's no rinky-dinky Mercedes, but a caddy that's waiting out front. Caddy for the tour. Hello. Then they go for a spin and some laughs with Ron behind the wheel. Chris says Ron's the perfect driver, but pleads with him to be careful as the car's his baby. Chris may be nervous, but Ron has the big old caddy with its eight-cylinder engine well under control. Together, they cruise along country roads. Hey, is it 52? It dates from 1952, but Ron says the car drives like a dream, like a big Cadillac should. You just have to get used to this huge steering wheel, he says. It's very big and very high, but it drives well. Hey, there he is. Buff head good. Chris says it was fun sitting in the passenger seat for a change and watching someone drive his car. That was a new experience for him. Ron says it was great fun. After all, how many times do you get the chance to drive a 52 Caddy, he asks. He'll never forget it, and he hopes Chris is listening. He'd like to take the car for the weekend and begs Chris to let him have it. And the answer is yes. The Green Lady and me were friends, best friends. Whoa, yes. Ron's one lucky guy.